The Youth Academy is one of the most loved parts of career mode, but as a community, we actually know very little about it. Have you ever wondered what the best possible youth player looks like? Have you ever wondered what the highest value a youth player can have it? Well today I'll be explaining both of these points and more and sharing a few other bits of information that I found about the FIFA Youth Academy in career mode. So how did I get this information? Well I ran FIFA 23 on my PC, I used Cheat Engine to get scouts that brought back 15 players each every single week, meaning every single time I got a youth report I was getting 45 new players generated. From here I set up some scripts that screen shotted and put the information into an excel sheet and today I'm sharing the results with you. This resulted with me having information about 2,000 generated players, a data set that will at least help us make some good assumptions about the, how the academy works. While I've tried to be as accurate as possible in this video, it is actually possible there are some players with even better stats than what we're going to talk about today, so let me know in the comments if you found one. So let's get started talking about the best possible youth player. From my data, there's six things that actually matter to youth players. There's the age, the player's overall ability, the player's potential, the player's weak foot, the player's skill moves, and the player's value. If we compare the very best from all of these players, we will have the ultimate FIFA Youth Academy player that can actually generate in-game. Potential was probably the weirdest part. It's not actually that rare to get a player with 93 to 94 potential. If you use Reddit, you'll see someone who posts one of these on the career modes Reddit every few hours. But from using Cheat Engine, I actually did find a few players with 95 potential, but I think even 96 might be possible. This means the range you see in game, the 93 to 94, is actually slightly misleading. But I did only see this 95 potential on two of my two and a half thousand players. For example, Kylian Mbappe also has 95 potential in FIFA, and the last player to ever have above 95 potential was Messi back in 2014 when he was given 97. I guess the unusual thing about potential is how players aren't actually guaranteed to get there anymore. In the past, you'd have Sancho, Dybala, Pogba and Jao Felix all getting up to 94 rated in every career mode, but in real life, none of them really got past 86. And I think this is something similar to how it works on career mode this year. You have to be performing really well for a really long time to actually get your player past 90. Meanwhile, in previous years, it's been fairly easy to actually get all the way up to 99 with every single player. This means the amount of high potential young players doesn't actually bother me that much this year. So now that we know that 95 is the most potential a player can get, let's look at something easier to understand. Youth Academy players can generate from anywhere from the age of 15 to 18. It's as easy as that. You can't get a 14 year old in FIFA, so 15 years old is the best because they'll have more time to grow and maybe reach their potential. So this means so far, the best possible youth player will be a 15 year old with 95 or maybe 96 potential. What overall might the ideal academy graduate have? Well, of course, a lot of this comes down to if you do retraining. Quite a lot of the time, academy players will be generated with the wrong position. High finishing central defensive midfielders and high crossing central attacking midfielders were two of the most common players that I noticed in the game this year. So it can be hard to give a firm answer on what is the highest possible overall a youth player can have. If we go off the highest generated overall that I actually found before retraining, we'd be looking at a 76 rated player, but I'm sure we could have trained many of the low 70 rated players into an 80 if we did retrain them for a few weeks. The majority of the high overall players were 17, which I guess is to be expected because they have had a bit longer to get better at the game. I found it super rare to actually get a 15 year old with over 70 overall, so we're going to say that maybe 73 is the best that a 15 year old can actually generate at. Transfer value is something interesting to look at because I know a lot of people decide who they're going to sign based on transfer value when it comes to youth academy players. If you do get a young player with a value of over £5 million, this means that you will probably have maxed out potential of 95 or 96. Value is a big factor in why we sign these players, but don't think that any player worth under a million is worthless. If we use one of the many potential calculators that are online, we can actually see that a 15 year old player with 42 overall and a value of 210,000 can actually be over 83 potential. This is enough to be one of the top 25 strikers in the world according to FIFA, so at least consider the stats before rejecting these kind of youth players. So now our perfect youth player has an age of 15, they've been retrained to the right position for their stats, they have a potential of 95 and an overall in the high 70s. 
let's have a look at the other things that a youth player can have. Treats, weak foot and skill moves do not actually affect the player's price or stats, but will make the player perform better in game and therefore develop much faster. I've talked a ton about traits in the past, but there are a few that you should definitely be looking out for. In a previous video, we decided that power header trait was the best, followed by the second wind one. Think about how many crosses and corners you're getting in every single game. Having power header makes the chances of every single one of them increase to go in the back of the net. Not only do they get priority position for corners just on the edge of the six yard box, but they do get a header on target. The majority of the time, it will be unsavable. The second wind trait gives players extra stamina in the last 30 minutes of games. If you're playing any kind of press, you'll be familiar with that feeling of having slow and sluggish players towards the ends of games. Having a few players with this trait can not only help you keep pressing, it can actually help you counter and might win you one or two games this season. So if you do see a youth player with either power header or second wind, then make sure you do sign them up. Beyond traits, having a good weak foot rating means your players do not lose accuracy when using their other foot. A 5-star weak-footed player is able to fully finish with both feet, fully pass and do everything the same, which is useful for strikers and playmakers, but can be basically ignored for every other position. You might want a couple on the wings, but it doesn't really matter if they are one-footed. The last thing you might want to look at is high skill moves. This is totally user preference because it depends on if you actually use them in game, but I do feel like high skill move players keep the ball closer when they're dribbling. It might just be me, but even without using skills, I think that does improve the player. So now let's take one final look about what we're all looking for with every scout we send out on our youth academy. The most likely place to find this player is Brazil, so send your scout there. In the striker position, we'll have a 5-star weak foot, 5-star skills, 6 foot 7 player with 95 potential. He's going to be 15 years old and most likely is rated 75 or above for finishing, pace and strength. Overall, they're between 73 and 75 as this is the highest rated 15 year old player that I could find in a youth academy scout. Possibly they have been retrained, maybe from centre mid or centre back, to move them up to a 77 or 80 rated player. You're going to have to be looking for physically strong players if you want to find a player this tall, but it shouldn't actually be that difficult to do. And there we have it, it might be rarer than winning the lottery, but if you do somehow get all of these factors to line up, you will have the best youth player possible on FIFA career mode. Even if you only find a few of these things in your next scout report, maybe a really tall player, a really high potential player, or a 15 year old who has surprisingly good stats, make sure you sign them up. Hopefully you've learned a few things about how FIFA generates youth players, I know I have while making this video. And let me know about your best youth player in the comments below, it's always interesting to read little stories about your favourite players. Also make sure you subscribe and check out the playlist on the video on screen right now if you want some more FIFA content. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you soon, cheers and goodbye.